Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 20th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Let me start with a reminder that next weekend is the Braddock Bay Raptor Research Bird of Prey Days Festival. It will be April 26th through the 28th, and I'll put a link in the description. Come out to see some presentations, live birds, and visit us at the Hawk Watch. After a late night of finishing up everything from yesterday's huge flight out at the Hawk Watch, I went straight to the Hawk Watch again this morning and started the count around 8 a.m. because we had good conditions with mostly sunny skies and a nice southwesterly wind, and we had a pretty good flight throughout the first couple hours with a lot of broad wings and turkey vultures. After that, a cold front hit and the winds became stronger from the west, and we had some periods of sun and clouds, and then it eventually settled into cloudier skies with a few sprinkles here and there and not too much activity throughout the rest of the day. Here we see a hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded tips, so we should be thinking excipiter. We see a very small head and a squared off tail because all of the tail feathers are around the same length. And we see some brown streaking underneath, making this a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a small raptor with very pointed wings, so we should be thinking falcon. And overall it's light underneath, so a small, light-colored falcon is an American kestrel. And on the down flap, we see more of the coloration. We see that the wings are blue and black, and the back and tail of the bird are orange, making this a male American kestrel. Here we have a nice flyby look at a male wood duck. And look at the overall shape of the wood duck, especially the tail. Wood ducks have somewhat long, squared off tails, which is a distinctive silhouette among the ducks that we see. Here we have a small butio in a glide posture. We see a lot of brown barring underneath. We see that the wingtips are somewhat pointed. We see a dark trailing edge to the wings, and it's a very straight trailing edge to the wings as well. And we see a dark tail with a white band. This is an adult broad-winged hawk. And it didn't take long for a nice little flight of broad wings to pick up. Most of them were up pretty high, either to the lake side or directly overhead. Not huge groups like we were seeing yesterday, but we had small kettles, maybe up to around 20 or 30 birds, and we ended up with more than 700 for the day, most of them coming in that morning window when we had the southwesterly winds. Here we have a large grayish tan bird with long trailing legs and a long straight neck. This is a sandhill crane. And here's another look at the same sandhill crane when it was directly overhead. Here we have a large dark raptor with a large head and a lot of splotchy white throughout the undersides. This is an immature bald eagle. Here we have a small butio with pointed wings and a tail that looks dark with a white band. This is another adult broad-winged hawk. After the wind shifted, the migration really slowed down, but we had a decent amount of bald eagle activity. Here we have a nice adult bald eagle. Here's another immature bald eagle. Again, notice the large head. And notice a lot of splotchy white underneath, especially in this wing pit area. Those are both good field marks to distinguish bald eagles from golden eagles, which would have a smaller head and not show white in this wing pit area. Here's another young bald eagle. This one appears to be a juvenile, so one that was born last year. And it's starting to molt its innermost primary feathers, which are the first ones to be replaced. And that's why it has these gaps here in the wing. And we see that typical large headed silhouette. And when we take the photo and brighten it up, we can see that it does have some white here in the wing pit area. Here's another high migrating eagle. Again, we see that large headed silhouette. And this one looks mostly dark underneath, maybe a little bit of splotchy white. It's hard to tell what's real and what's just photo artifact. And to me, it looks like it's getting a whitish head and white tail, although the tip of the tail looks dark. So this looks like an older immature, like a fourth year type bald eagle. Here's another immature bald eagle, and look at the trailing edge of this bird. We see a mixture of shorter, darker feathers and longer, more faded feathers. So these longer ones that are the more faded brown color are retained juvenile feathers that this bird would have grown in the nest. And the shorter, darker feathers around them are ones that have already been replaced one time. So this appears to be a bird coming up on two years old, so born two summers ago. Here's another adult bald eagle. Notice that the underside of the wings and body are just completely brown and the head and tail are completely white. Here we have another immature bald eagle and notice how large the head and bill is on this bird. And perhaps most notable in this photo is this eagle caught one heck of a lunch. Take a look at that fish. And if you know what kind of fish that is, leave me a comment letting me know. 
Here we have a hawk with a long tail, kind of long lanky wings that are somewhat pointed, an owl-like facial disc, and very plain underneath. This is a juvenile northern harrier, and you can see it's holding its wings up into a little bit of a V. We'd call that a dihedral or maybe even a modified dihedral, which is when the wings go up into a V and then flatten out. And here we have a large swallow with a slightly forked tail and is completely dark blue or purple underneath. This is an adult male purple marten. And here's an example of the weather that we had to deal with in the afternoon along with strong and gusting westerly winds, so there wasn't much of a flight. Taking a look at the eBird list today, we had 52 species out at the Hawk Watch. And taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 240 turkey vultures, 5 bald eagles, 6 northern harriers, 56 sharp-shinned hawks, 734 broad-winged hawks, 12 red-tailed hawks, and 4 American kestrels for a total of 1,057. So not a bad little cleanup flight after yesterday's huge day with more than 12,000 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 32,334 and the season total to 40,454. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for a mix of sun and clouds with a high around 50 and strong westerly winds at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So overall, somewhat similar to today after we had that wind shift when we weren't really seeing that much, although if there's more sunshine, that could get some birds up, but I would expect light to moderate migration. For Monday, they're calling for mainly sunny skies with a high in the upper 40s and light north-northwest winds. So it's not a very favorable wind, and if the birds do get up from that sunshine, they're going to be hard to spot against the blue skies, and that northerly wind is going to be pushing them away from the lake shore. We may have to move into Frisbee Hill. We'll see where the flight line develops, but I would only expect light to moderate migration. And for Tuesday, they're calling for more clouds than sun with a high in the mid-60s and southwest winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So those are great winds. Definitely keep an eye on Tuesday as possibly the next big flight. All right. Well, today we had another good flight in the morning, kind of finishing up yesterday's huge flight. And then it was a little bit slower throughout the rest of the day, giving me a chance to leave a little bit early and get caught up on a few things. It was nice to see some of you from the BBRR Raptor Education class out at the Hawk Watch today. Although we had the shelter behind the platform to stay out of the wind, we had some nice looks at bald eagles and Cooper's hawks, so I'm glad you got to see at least a few birds even though the migration was slow. It's a fun time of year as we're here in the peak of the hawk migration and the songbird variety is starting to pick up. I'm seeing some warbler reports start to trickle in and Baltimore Orioles as well. So I hope you're able to get out birding soon and visit us out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And again, especially keep an eye on Tuesday with those favorable southwest winds. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.